Hi everyone, welcome to the Sip and Spin. I am the Tipsy Spinster, and on today's show, we are going to dive in to part three of this season's From Fleece to Fabric. My glass is a lovely little concoction that I'd like to call cleaned fleece. Can't tell you what's in it because basically I just dumped in a bunch of alcohol and went for a really cute garnish. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the prep before we start spinning. One of the really cool things that Robin does from Meridian Jacobs is she includes a little bit of an instruction sheet. Zola's joining us today as well because it's Zola. And this is wonderful. And I followed Robin's advice. And what I realized is I started putting the episodes together for this season is I have been showcasing a book within each episode. And I know some of you have said, oh, can you do book reviews? And yep, I will probably start doing more in the way of more formal book reviews. But the book that I want to talk about on this episode is 51 Yarns. And what makes this book so great is because it doesn't matter if you are just starting out processing and learning to spin or if you're experienced, there's literally something in here for everyone. And so the two pages or the two sections that I'm going to focus on on today's episode are the sections that talk about woolen and worsted yarn. Worsted is where all of your fibers are aligned. They're all going in one direction. It's the best for warp which I think is what I want for part of this fiber because as I've been processing this, I have a feeling the fabric that I make is most likely going to be woven. So I need to create a warp yarn as well as a weft yarn. So the two types of yarn are woolen and worsted. Worsted, your fibers are all going in one direction. It's going to be a smooth, tight, strong yarn. Woolen, on the flip side, all of your fibers are jumbled together and they're all a, kind of a mishmash and you end up with this beautiful, light, airy, fluffy, kind of not as strong yarn. It can still be strong, but chances are it's, it's going to be a fluffier yarn. Well, how do you achieve that? Well, you achieve that with the tools that you have. So carding, which is what my little $1 flip carter is going to do for me. And if you have two of these, you essentially have a very tiny set of hand cards. And if you look, my hand cards, my little dog brush flip carter, and my little tiny drum carter, they all have carding cloth. These things are going to give you a woolen prep. And that's what this is right here. On the flip side, if I want all of my fibers aligned, I'm going to comb, ah, like Wolverine. This is a tiny set. It's an introductory set of combs. If you want to go uh, a little bit more, you can go with the Valkyries, which are the double tines. These are St. Blaise, which unfortunately, I don't think these are made anymore, but there are very similar styles to this on Etsy, you just need to do a search for uh, double tined combs like these. Yeah, I know they're really scary. I love them. So let's get in and start talking about fiber. Okay, so what can we do? Again, th this is one of those seasons where I feel like it's important to understand it doesn't cost a lot to process your own fleece. Probably your biggest expense is going to be the fleece itself. 
because with the exception of the buckets, which you probably already have, and the soap, which is actually not very expensive and you don't need very much of, all you need is this. And yep, absolutely. You can process an entire fleece with a small dog brush, dollar store. And what you'll end up with is fiber that's that's going to be pretty consistent. So you're you're doing a worsted prep doing it this way, but it's going to be one of those things, depending upon how you spin it, you can get woolen or worsted. And I can talk about that a little bit, but let's take a look at our flip carter. So I have a lock and with each of these three sections, I washed them in three different batches, the dark and the mix. I went through with my flip carter and I cleaned all of the debris out with the white because I had so much of the white. I did half of it fully flip carded and opened up and I did half of it where I just opened it up with my hands and that's why I still have so many that have the lock structure intact because I wanted to show this. So with this I basically just opened this up with my hand and as you can see it's beautifully white. There's a little bit of uh, compression down here. And so I'm going to use this tool to open this up to make my spinning easier. So I'm going to start at the tip. I'm going to open the tip up. I'm going to move it around. And there's a little bit of a nep right here. What I'm doing is I'm lining up, which is kind of interesting because this is a carding, it has carding cloth on it, but essentially I'm lining my fibers up so I can spin them. And I'm getting rid of anything that could potentially cause neps in my yarn. Now, are there going to be a lot of neps here? No, there absolutely aren't. And I'm certainly not going to get rid of this. So as you can see, yeah, there's some inconsistencies in here, but I'm still hanging on to this because it's not bad at all. And this fiber is so luxurious and soft. I don't want to waste any of it. So now here, my fibers are all going the same direction. Well, at this point, If I roll like so, there we go. Now I have a little baby mini faux faux log, and I can spin straight from here. And that tube is going to put air in my fiber as I spin. So I am going to just set that aside as being ready to go. Now let's take a look at some of our other tools. So there are tons of videos on combing and carding and I've talked about them extensively as well. When I went back through and I looked at what I had here, I realized I'm going to go ahead and put these through the drum carter. So if you have a drum carter, here's the one thing that you do kind of need to be aware of. With all of these pieces, I think, in looking back at how I've processed fiber in the past, my biggest mistake was just grabbing fiber and shoving it into the drum carter. And it doesn't work that way. It's, it, that's not using your drum carter to the best of its ability. So even though this is incredibly clean, I am going to go through and open these fibers up before I put them through the drum carter. So I'm going to take a handful. And this is where it's, I mean, it's kind of a benefit if you don't wash and you can find your tip because you do want to put your tips in first. So I'm going to go back through and I'm going to look for my tips. I'm going to open them up a little bit. Get rid of those naps.
And then I'll start putting it through the drum carter. So I'm just going to line up all of my fibers until I get a pile. And then I will put it through the drum carter. I'll be back with that in just a second. Okay, so once you have a pile of essentially carded fluff sort of going in the same direction, and again, I am doing a woolen prep, so I want all of my fibers to go in a random different direction, and I don't want to overload my carder. I've got a choice. I can either use the hand cards or my little carder. I'm not good with these, so I'm going to use my carder. <laughs> so I'm going to very slowly... No, oh, I missed a spot. Whoops. I want my fibers to be opened up as I put them in, and I'm going to slowly get them going on the drum carter. And as you can see, the drum carter opens the fibers up even more, which is what I want. Okay, so as you can see, as I fed it in, I've got all of these blends. Wait, where'd it go? There was a bit of vegetable matter, and this is an opportunity for me to pull out any last little bits. If there's any other vegetable matter left in here, I'm going to spin it out. So now I'm just going to break this. And essentially, when you look at what I have, I could put this through again. I've got some additional... Uh, nubs in here that the drum carter didn't get but when I spin this so when I look at what I have here it's very similar to what I got on my hand card and I will pull this off and take a look I'll do a little bit of a comparison probably put this through again, but when I am done with this, it's very similar to what I got with my hand card. So this was hand carded. This was drum carded. This is with the small combs, and now I'm going to do this last little bit with my big combs. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab a little bit of fiber and I'm just going to keep it, I'm going to charge my combs just like I would my hand cards. And then grabbing my other one, I'm going to go, again, I'm not going to go this way or this way because it's going to pop off. I'm going to go with it going across, and I'm just going to gently grab. So I'm looking at this, the combs blends the fiber a lot more. So I've got just this little bit left on here that I can pull out. So I'm just going to set that aside. And so essentially, this is what I've got. And as you can see, it blends it a lot more. And so this is where we can actually start having a conversation about the use of a diz. There's a lot of ways to get this off my comb. And I can either just pull it out or I can use a Diz, which is one of the reasons why these little guys, the St. Blaise combs, have a spot to secure them. A Diz is basically 
uh, anything with a variety of different holes in it. And depending upon what hole I pull this through, that's going to determine the size of my roving. I'm just going to go with one of these. And so I'm going to start pulling. And that's the cool thing with the Diz, is as you are pulling off the comb, you are creating roving. That's all going to go the same direction. And you can do this off of a drum carter as well. It's, it's not just something that's used with combs. But that is, and see how it's all going the same direction. Essentially, that is combed off of the big combs. So in looking at what I have, and I can get more off of there, which I'll pull it off in just a second. So as I look through this, what do I want? Do I want more of the worsted, where all of my fibers go direct in the same direction? Or do I want the woolen where all of my fibers are going very, very different directions and it's going to be light, fluffy, and airy? Depends. I haven't decided yet, but on the next episode when I get all of this processed, that will be when you see what I have decided to do with how I process this. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy processing.